Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I wish to thank uh, University of La Coruña and especially to Cristobal for really, uh, oh, thank you, for uh, really an extraordinary event and uh, uh, outstanding organization. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, after this en route seminar, we will have another one in Slovenia, Nova Gorica, and I'm already afraid if the expectations will be the same, we will have a lot of work to do. So, um, uh, when we were deciding what to present today, we were thinking uh, at the beginning to show one of maybe realized projects or the things that we discuss at uh, our lectures, but then we thought that it might be challenging also to present a project that just started. So we will take this occasion to present both um, a project that started, let's say, a year ago, but also a larger frame of reflection that uh, comes out from this project and will certainly drive our research activities in next year and it somehow will also path the way to the, toward our next on route seminar, which will be on landscape and migration. Um, so um, the, uh, it is about, the project is the Horizon 2020 uh, project entitled Urbinat, which stands for healthy corridors as drivers of social housing neighborhoods for the co-creation of social environmental and marketable nature-based solutions. Uh, so <laughs> I will not stop on the presentation of the project that will be done by Marco, uh, who is a project coordinator for our university. Just few words, keywords that will also somehow um, 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 pave the way of my uh, presentations. So uh, the focus is co uh, community-driven co-creation of nature-based solution taken uh, corridors as a context of their implementation. Um, so the project is, however, uh, just one of many uh, projects uh, running right now within national and European research uh, uh, project, um, and are part of those initiatives that recognize that working with nature and learning and producing with nature is red, rather than against it, can help us in enhancing na natural, but most of all, uh, social, social capital of the cities and pave the way toward more resource efficient and greener economies, which enhance rather than deplete the nature. But what implications has working with nature? Um, the world that we live in, and as we have seen today in many different presentations, is the product of our capacity to build homes, dwelling, residences on one side, and on the other side to overcome the gaps and the obstacles while moving from one dwelling to the another. We can say that we are somehow building our destiny migrating from one destination to another. So from being a simple gestures like stone step or piece of wood to overcome a stream or to bigger gesture of imperium like palaces, squares, bridges, we could acknowledge that there is a pervasive tendency to colonize the earth through the model of home, through the model of oikos, escalating up to the same consideration of earth as a collective home for wider and extended set of living beings. But as well as humans design, also other living beings design and are designing and co-producing this home. We all build and influence our environmental, our environments and our backwards, these environments build and influence ourselves in the production process of living beings. However, as a rule, any efficient colonization need a pro needs a project. And we, pro we uh, humans use the project to somehow project ourselves into the future. We eject something that does not exist yet, a model straight forward into the future. So uh, moreover, when we project, we have to somehow abandon 
the autographic dimension of our work and embrace all these statement voices, preferences that others have while projecting themselves into the future. So, um, moreover, in this co-design practice, we are all called to overcome, as Michael Jones states, the multiple practice of mutual recognition. And as much as complex the participation processes are, and finally, we have to advance towards shaping a concrete and shared body of mutual identification. So, um, we can say that traditionally, our project time is not uh, only linear, but it's straightforward envisaging something that does not exist yet. But dealing, working, producing with nature implies to deal with different conception of time. Those dealing with landscape project, they know that they have to wait and waiting is a constitutional part of the produ production. Trees, veg vegetables have to grow. And we might wait so much to deliver the sweet and final expectations to the next generation. And also, we have to marry the cyclical circular time, which each time returns to its on itself, like season, speaking, speaking about nature, or to the idea of tradition speaking in cultural terms. So it's clear that landscape and working with nature challenges our notion of project. So the problem is how to combine, how to marry the cyclical, circular time, which each time returns on itself, with the linear time of project. So the production and the progress is not then simply circular or linear, for example, a circular notion in project could be combined or in producing to care and maintenance. And those dealing with gardens, with uh, trees, knows that they have a priority in terms of care and maintenance more than with idea of project of imposing something new. So this production and progress with nature is not circular or linear, but would be then more similar to the spiral of DNA, which elevates, it advances, while rotating on around itself. We should not forget that working with nature means to deal with time that has many dimensions, and these are not necessarily reciprocally excludable, which makes our projects and our designs extremely restless. So if plants and other living beings together with humans are co-designing and co-producing and are as such co-authors of our common earth and project, this earth is a consequence in permanent evolution. Then we should finally accept that landscape is not an inert, a fixed background where isolated migrants move. Landscape is permanently on the move, even if this is not perceptible. And all our territorial tendencies to build borders, properties, categories, or walls do often fail because all these movements design new powerful spatial patterns that consist of actors and backgrounds that affect and design each other. So from this point of view, landscape on the move, on the move results particularly powerful means that affects any form of radicalization of space production, whether intended as territory, boundary, or a category, or, or those seemingly more friendly radicalization like homemaking or, or placemaking, whenever they embrace uh, ambiguous feature of locality and of ownership of locality. So landscape and migrations help us to radically rethink the narratives, concepts, ideolo ideologies, and practices of placemaking and the consequent legacy over its ownership. So with this, uh, we shift to the landscapes in motion. So within European institutional debate, 
uh, of the last few years, the concept of corridor has been mainly uh, discussed on mac macro scale, um, functional to the circulation, as we have seen also in previous presentation, of large flows of people and goods. Uh, this pers perspective has often resulted um, in big infrastructural interventions for the rapid connection of, of um, large metropolitan centers without particular attentions of all territories that were simply crossed and uh, s felt uh, in this way um, um, bypassed by these great works that did not benefit um, the locals um, and their um, uh, production. Uh, <clears throat> so, however, without discussing this um, quite wide problem, these rapid connections uh, match perfectly the idea of Earth as space. Uh, I would not stop on this that has been meticulously described by Franco Farinelli, but we do establish in space a measurable distance between um, starting point of, uh, of uh, observation. Uh, yes, and the final uh, point of destination. So there is a measurable distance of time or space between the two um, points. Uh, as a matter of, of facts, of facts um, these um, uh, corridors, in these terms, I'm usually called like uh, non, non luoghi, non places, as Marc Auger has uh, defined. But uh, however, corridors are usually intended as a ways of privileged uh, flows of things and people, we do have also humanitarian corridors. Uh, so corridors are axes that sh uh, should be users friendly, that should somehow facilitate um, safe and continuous movement of multiple users. So uh, corridors simply happen when we have uh, two related but unconnected systems. Um, as a matter of fact, um, Ecological corridors, for example, uh, for example are on, a, on agenda since uh, Mar Mar MacArthur and Wilson's theory of island uh, biogeography. Their uh, theory holds that the rate of extinction on a given island is defined by the island size and relative degree of isolation. Over time, it became clear to conservation biologists that this theory applied not only to literal islands, but also to the figurative one, um, such as uh, pristine uh, wildlife uh, patches uh, that were surrounded by uh, human development. And the obvious and logical solution presented itself, uh, build bridges between islands. Um, so in any ecosystem, also in social spaces, isolation erodes the island's diversity. Traditional urbanism has often prioritized motor uh, transport corridors and enclosed recreational facilities or dwellings, a trend that has drastically eroded social integration exactly like isolation erodes the island biodiversity. So um, corridors should not only connect, but also act as catalysts of multiple interaction, uh, bringing together people and also extended idea of living beings to freely circulate in a boundless and healthy uh, environment. Um, hence, thinking, conceiving, designing, establishing a corridor beyond its mere function of interval between two points imposes the acceptance of migration and of the condition of in-betweennesses as a constitutional part of life and placemaking. So referring to homes, placemaking, oikos, parallel to colonization of Earth through the model of, ho of home as a principle, there is also a possibility of home and placemaking where migration dynamics and capacity of living beings to migrate literally disactivates any traditional form of homemaking intended as appropriation or as accumulation of things. Appropriation, whether private, uh, public, or community-driven, like, uh, is um, always is characterized by high excludability, and by rising borders between what is private, what is public, what is intimate, what is not intimate, and becomes uh, also, because of accumulation, it creates places, huh? Okay, 
uh, where some sort of order, stability, and rules drive its functioning. So, but when we connect to patches, to homes, to places that before were disconnected, we know that orders that rules the functioning of these realities might collapse or even overturn. Those dealing with the preservation of ecosystems know very well how unwise could be to establish a corridor. So ecologically, the movement of organ organisms is not always desirable, particularly when considering invasive species. But returning to people and their transfer, are there the same risk of being invaded by others by opening a social corridor? But is this exclusion of exotic always wise for the sake of preservation of authentic and local? What does it mean then to establish, design, and build, and inhabit these corridors, these thresholds, to be a resident on the move of these passages or of something that will never come out as a residence as such? The establishment of places where there is no excludability but high rivalry if we speak in ter terms of property matrix. So summarizing the findings that we have investigated until now, it becomes apparent that conceptualization of something as corridor is not a neutral gesture, for it carries out many considerable issues. And I will finish. So just to wrap uh, uh, together conclusions, corridors themselves are essentially essentially tend to overcome administrative territorial limitations. We know that corridors do not respect uh, borders, national or administrative or any territorial border. We do even part of corridors are bridges or other things that helps us to overcome the morphological limitation. Uh, they are reticular and changeable systems whose forms do not depend only on the innovation, on the technological innovation of the infrastructural system, but also on the pre-existing urban and environmental fabric. By their nature, the corridors are open, dynamic, and vibrant spaces, subject to influences from different contexts that struggle to compose stable balances. They are, as we said, uh, characterized by high accessibility, and high, rivalry, uh, uh, high accessibility and high rivalry, which is opposite of home. You know, private place has low accessibility. It's excludable. What is mine is not yours, OK? And there is low rivalry. Corridors, landscapes, common goods generally are characterized by this high rivalry, yet, and they are open. They are accessible as a rule. That's why sometimes with our, uh, our um, particip participative processes that aim to establish new ownership, we are completely missing the property matrix that characterizes landscape. So as such corridors are potential disactivators of urban and territorial dichotomies, center periphery, but also of the conception of places as immovable organisms and of non-places as mere and simple means of communications. Corridors are transfunctional by their nature. And I will stop here and leave to Marco Ward to, to somehow present, synthesize this project that includes uh, 30 partners and um, how many? 11, 11 uh, cities in uh, partnership. Um, yes. Um, the, well, the project is that, th that one that was indicated by Sasha, and uh, as you see, uh, the, the main title is Urban Inclusive Inno Innovative Nature. And it was responding to a call of the European Union to uh, promote uh, NBS, uh, so Nature-Based Solutions for Urban Regeneration. And the idea of this project, and I, thi and I think was the, uh, actually the innovation of it, was to uh, enlarge the concept of uh, Nature-Based Solutions. Uh, of course, taking uh, knowledge from different sites, uh, different parts of Europe and different sectors, of course, not only cities, not only universities, not only cities, not only universities, but other um, participants also outside Europe. Um, I would like, I would like to, to skip a little bit, but I think you, you will have all here in the presentation. Uh, picking up, uh, um, 
hints from these uh, different steps of the project. So the creation of living labs at local level, so the idea of making uh, local citizens participate, so contribute to their own uh, uh, design thinking of this corridor, and then the creation of a so-called COP, you see this community of practice, which is uh, the capacity of these people to, uh, to share, I mean, the knowledge that have um, um, matured during the preparation of the healthy corridor, and then the healthy corridors th themselves. But what is an healthy corridor? So we were talking about that so far. And I think this was interesting uh, also as, uh, as a proposal for this, um, for this event because we, we didn't think about that. So what uh, Sasha has been introduced to you as a sort of theoretical speculation of the concept of, of corridor was not at the base of this project that came out from uh, well, a PhD research at the University of Coimbra at the Center of uh, Social Studies as a way to connect actually uh, troubled neighborhoods in different parts of uh, Portugal. And the, the main application was in this case on Porto. At the beginning it was thought in Porto. Um, actually, we understood, but in a later stage, that this is uh, quite a um, 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 paradigm uh, of the new concept of landscape, as it, for example, it is promoted by the European Landscape Convention in its two main novelties, that is the uh, landscape as uh, perceived by people, and this is actually what has been trying to do uh, the project, especially by focusing on the troubled neighborhoods, so um, at the different, different levels, so places where people have their own uh, imaginary, their own landscape, and they're very rarely going out of it. And then uh, the idea of co-designing or co-sharing the, the space. So uh, a corridor, uh, the healthy corridor in, this, in our project is uh, by using NBS, and I will tell you a little bit more about uh, later, is to see uh, the existing um, weak points or, or strong points of, of a place, of a locality, and connect them in different ways. And the different ways are uh, the use of the MBS. As you see here, uh, we, we highlighted just a few spots. So create a sort of channel, but it's not really a channel, of course, but it's an imaginary channel that is made through the use of this MBS solution. These are only part of them. So we have uh, technological MBS, as you may imagine. These are at the basis, of course, of the MBS catalog produced by the European Union, as well as the territorial MBS, but we also proposed as nature-based solution also the participatory and social ones, because we believe that at the very nature of human beings, there is also the need to aggregate, for example, so this is uh, why participatory MBS are included, as well as the, the, human, the, the need of the human beings to be social, socially connected. In fact, uh, humans are often uh, distinguished by animals as well, also by, by, they, by, by, by their capacity to uh, create a common, a common platform for sharing uh, experiences or self-defense. Uh, of course, this is the leading uh, way of creation of this, co uh, of this um, healthy corridor. Uh, I have to say, el why healthy, by the way? Because it's, um, the focus of the project was working on this troubled neighborhoods, so social housing uh, areas that very often Europe, in the European cities and their sprawl into peri peripheries are becoming uh, places of uh, social problems. Uh, by the way, in the examples that I was posing to you in, in Porto, for example, we have a, a high criminality in these neighborhoods, uh, social uh, well, uh, drug dealings and all these uh, issues. Uh, not very important, this is the, the cities uh, we are uh, working on, but the concept is that some cities are leading the process, so they are uh, developing the MBS by implementing them by Rio, and then there are follower cities, so in this case Porto, Nantes, and Sofia, and the decision was also to go uh, more or less horizontally through Europe, uh, especially to connect experiences from different social orders, so that's why we had Sofia as a leading, uh, as a leading city, because it, it is taking into the stage also the backgrounds of the social, of the social uh, city. Um, and this is the design of the healthy corridor. 
uh, but then Brussels, uh, Osta, Stroop in close to Copenhagen, Nova Gorica and Siena as followers, as well as uh, some other cities from outside, especially Khoramabad in Iran and Shenyang in China. Oh, this is maybe not relevant because it's uh, stressing on what I've been saying so far. So the different kind of MBS, so participatory, technological, territorial, and social uh, with solidarity economy. I put here some examples just not to be too vague. So the uh, tec um, technological MBS, I, maybe you are aware of that, probably yes. So spirulina pools or um, um, use of different kind of technological materials to create specific uh, bio um, spheres. And then healthy corridors through uh, territorial solutions. So you have, for example, um, retention basins or terraces, uh, all applied at urban level. Um, then um, participatory MBS, like the design thinking or the uh, focus groups in situ. We have a list of, of course, of that, and I've taken just a few of them. And then the social MBS, well, social economy MBS, social currency, um, cooperative management, and so on. So the idea is that the, the, the corridor is created by linking a specific spots of the city so that in such a way to allow people living in these troubled neighborhoods to move from their, uh, their residences or their uh, usual environment to uh, other environments, so connecting to places that where they were usually excluded. Um, a small focus is the city of Nova Gorica. I'm talking about that because this is a little bit anticipating what Sasha uh, said to you that we will we are planning to make this um, in event in the future on migration. Nova Gorica on, on route, yes, of course, but they know. Um, uh, Nova Gorica is an example of that because it's a border town. Actually, it's uh, called Nova Gorica because it's uh, the new Gorizia, and it was established in 46, 1946, after the uh, creation of the border after the end of the war. So excluding, I mean, those people that were um, Slovene, uh, um, of, of Slovene origins from the city of uh, Gorizia, so the new government of Yugoslavia decided to establish that completely new city. Now the new city is not new anymore in the sense that uh, not having the border uh, there in place, uh, it's rejoining the city of Gorizia. So we have two different concepts of city, so the historic town and the socialist town, and uh, but with some problems, especially now uh, due to the, um, the, the, the depression um, given by the erasure of the border because there was before a uh, uh, economy based on uh, a border economy, which is not in place anymore. So the two cities are suffering for that, especially the city of Gorizia. So what was planned here it was to, uh, in the, through the, 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 um, the project, Urbinar project, okay, I don't see here the cursor, okay. It was to uh, connect one part of the city down on the, on the down, le down left uh, picture here especially focusing on a river, which is not a river, by the way, it's a stream. It was actually a sewage system that was taking a sewage from the city of Nova Gorica to Gorizia in the past. Now it has been cleaned up. It's a sort of uh, river, uh, to, uh, but it's not exploited as the people in Nova Gorica would, would like to. Um, so the idea is that in this case, uh, focusing on some uh, interesting spots of the city, I don't know if it's, if it's clear enough, that's the Koren River on the upside, uh, a part of the city, of the, of the, um, of the screen, uh, is to um, um, improve um, the, the paths for the people to, uh, from that side to go to the, to the other parts of the, of the city. So Nova Gorizia in this case, but I don't have the course, so here it's not, not able to show you. Uh, but, but going also uh, to the opposite side of the hill, you see a hill where you have the other side of the city of Nova Gorica, uh, connecting also some cultural sites. Uh, cultural sites which are highlighted here in this picture, one of them will be one of the focus of our project in the city and uh, one of the focus also of the, this en route seminar that we will be uh, having next year well, probably. So it's quite intense area, this uh, hill of Nova Gorica, because it's uh, merging different cultural sites like the Kustanievica, which is 
Kustanievica Monastery, which is the place where the Bourbons were buried uh, 200 years ago, so a Christian place. Then Villa Rafut, which is a neo-Moresque villa, so not, not Islamic one, but recalling the Islamic uh, architecture and uh, st styles, as well as the, as well as the um, Jewish cemetery and uh, passing through the park of, of, um, of uh, Villa Rafut. And of course, then entering into the city of Gorizia. Uh, the idea of the corridor was uh, somehow so successful in our mind um, as a way of reconnecting uh, landscapes and, and uh, troubled areas that we are trying to, to repeat it in, in, uh, in plan, at least in the city of Rijeka, which is in Croatia, where we are uh, working on another project, which is this project CLIC, uh, Circular Models Leveraging Investments in Cultural Heritage Adaptive Reuse, so merging cultural heritage, historic urban landscapes, and circular economy. And in this, in this uh, city, we are trying to reproduce somehow the concept of corridor, but in this case, it's more, more, more call, called, let's say, cultural corridor, cultural healthy corridor, so reconnecting parts of the industrial heritage of the city to the, uh, its uh, traditional uh, destination of port city, but with a strong link with the sea. Uh, I think that's, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you.